guys, I've been having a bit of fun with this one recently, so I thought, let's share it, why not? It's just two lines of tab, there's a bit of repetition in it, so I think you're going to get it fairly quickly. Uh, lots of tea and coffee, a little bit of um, a dump tea towards the end when I start to nod you into a potential picking pattern for this song, but don't worry about that just yet, we will get there. So, we're going to start with crotchet rests, we're in 4-4 four, four time, lovely lovely. Um, and just a quick reminder, I'm using Pima fingers, so you can see already, I'm ready to go. <laughs> my thumb takes care of these guys, my E, my A, my D. Um, my index is on G, my middle is on B, my ring finger takes care of the E, and normally I'd be planting way back down there by the sound hole, but so that you can see it, I'm up here, alright? Please make sure you don't play up here, it's so much harder. So. We're starting with two crotchet rests, which means we would count one, two, and then we would start. And in this case, we might find it easier to count one and two and, just so you can understand the timing there. So you would go one and two and three and four and... And already you can see I've got D major down. That's because I find that a little bit easier, less for me to have to think about. My two is there already, my three is there. Um, I say my two is there, but I do actually hammer onto it. But I just find that gives me the stability for the next bar as well, so that I can find everything, basically. So if you think that's gonna help you out, pop a D chord down, why not? And uh, yeah, just a reminder for folks, if we're hammering on, I'm gonna take everything off for a minute, we're just plucking the string once, and we are hammering our finger onto it. All right, aim for the bone, you'll get a better sound. And that's a hammer on. Okay, so let's try bar one together. One and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and... And we'll do it again. I'll do it with a hammer on next time. But this time I'm gonna count with my teas and coffees. So I'll count those crotchet or quarter note rests as a T, okay? So I'll still count you in. One, two, three, four. Tea, tea, coffee, tea. I think you can see already why I quite like counting with words. <laughs> it does make life a little bit easier. And then as we come into the next bar, we're still on a D chord. We are plucking our open D with that three. Two Ds. So don't obsess if you're like, oh, that sounds a bit weird. We're coming over to the A, which is this note, by the way, um, in just a sec. So don't worry if you think, oh, that sounds very weird. Just keep it moving. It'll all make sense in context. All right, bar two. Let's do it with numbers first. One and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and. Okay, and then let's do it with uh, words. So, one, two, three, four. Tea, tea, coffee, tea. And then if we put those two bars together, you're going to start to feel pretty satisfied with yourself. Remember, you've got two crotchet note rest at the beginning, or two quarter note rest. Basically, you'll hear a one and two and before you come in. But you'll also hear an empty bar, I'm afraid. There's a whole lot of waiting around. <laughs> Let's give it a go. So from bar one into bar two. One and two and three and four. Here we go. One and two and three and four. you can hear the song now. All right, let's do it with tea and coffee. Same again. One, two, three, four. Tea, tea, coffee, tea, 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 coffee, tea. Lovely, all right. And quick reminder, guys, if I'm going too fast for you, slow it down, click the cog, Settings, playback speed, 75 is your best friend. Um, 50 sounds a little bit like I'm underwater, but you know, to each their own. If you prefer that, that's fine. <laughs> it's absolutely fine. And of course it works the other way too. You can speed me up, but let's carry on. So after bar two, we're coming into an A. I will put my A chord down because I prefer that because I've got a two here and a two there on the tab. For the other two, I like to lean back. So what I mean by that is I'll Lean that ring finger back, and then put it back. So I pluck it, 
lean back onto it to sort of hammer onto it and then just lift it off again. And that works for me, but that doesn't necessarily mean it will work for you. So what you could do is play your A and actually move your ring finger down there. And you've got the opportunity here for a pull off if you would like it. So a pull off is when, if I take everything off a sec, just so that it's nice and obvious, pull off is when we've got the note, so in this case it's a two, and then we pluck it and then pull it off with the left hand. So pluck, pull off with the left hand. That was a little bit over exaggerated and you'll find a happy medium for your own hand, to be honest. The, the more you do it, the less you get that and the more you get, or a cleaner one. There you go, you've got lots of options with this song <laughs> to make it as smooth as you like. So anyway, that's probably a good idea for you to move your ring finger down from that A position. Because I'm well aware that it is a little bit weird and also my E isn't as loud as I would like it to be. That could be better, so maybe I should take my own advice. <laughs> So let's do bar three together, all right? So plunk your A chord down. I think it's probably gonna help you even if you just had the bottom of it or if you used those two fingers and then moved your middle finger to get the E string in a minute. Whatever version of an A you can do, I think it's gonna help. So bar three, here we go. One and two and three and four and one and two. Let's do it with tea and coffee. One, two, three, four. Tea, tea, coffee, tea. Okay, and we'll move you on to into the next bar. So it is an E minor chord, but I don't play an E minor because it's gonna hinder me if I were to do that. It's like, yeah, it's nice, but something's gonna go wrong because it feels so awkward. So don't worry about putting the chord down here. We've just got a three, two, and we could pull that off again. And we could, if we wanted to, hammer the three down. But I don't want you to worry about hammering that three down. The two pull off might just happen naturally. So this is how I would play it. So I would actually play it. I think it's because I want it to sound deliberate. Near what heaven, rather than a near what heaven, which is a little bit smoother, a little bit more legato. See, I know some words. <laughs> All right, so let's do that bar. That's the fourth bar. I'm gonna do it together. One and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and... And you will hear a few ghost notes. I apologize. It's because I'm up the neck and I'm quite used to flicking from when I play banjo. <laughs> So sorry about that. Every now and then you might get a little stray G string, but I'll do my best to correct it. All right, let's do that with tea and coffee. One, two, three, four. Tea, tea, coffee, tea. There it goes again. Okay, let's go bar three into bar four. So from that A shape, remember moving the ring finger over, get to the two, pull it off if you can, and then ring finger again for that fourth bar. Here we go. One and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and... Good, and then let's try it with tea and coffee. One and two and three and four and tea, tea, coffee, tea. feel we're nearly at the end of this phrase so let's go straight into that next bar we're straight in with our tea tea coffee tea and can you see I've sort of gone from an abstract G shape I've got that three down there but I haven't put the rest of the chord down because I don't need it I need that three though so I've reached back with the two and it's almost like I'm coming into a D and then I'm in my D so again you'll go one two three and four so let's try that, counting first. So remember, you've just come from that shape. So the ring finger is on three, so it's ready to reach. So start in that position so that you get used to that transition. So here we go. We are now on the fifth bar. Nearly there. I know it feels like you're not nearly there, but you are because there's so much repetition, so don't worry. 
One and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and... And hopefully you can see there's that opportunity to hammer on again if you would like to. All right, and then with tea and coffee. One, two, three, four. Tea, tea, coffee, tea. Super duper. And then I, I suggest we do the entire top line before we carry on. So let's rewind back to the beginning. I didn't realize this guy had come so far down. My apologies, come back up, you little naughty hand. Let's give that, do you know, genuinely, I thought it was getting easier to play. <laughs> That'll be why. All right, here we go. So from the beginning, as far as bar five. So here we go. Um, and I'm trying to decide counting. Let's do it both ways. So counting first. One and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and one, two. Let's do the same thing again with tea and coffee. Here we go. One, two, three, four. Tea, tea, coffee, tea, 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 coffee, tea, 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 coffee, tea, 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 coffee, tea, 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 coffee, tea. Some powerful hammer-ons there. I think I accidentally got a hammer-on of a D chord. <laughs> it was quite impressive. All right, we're moving on. And remember, you can rewind that as many times as you need to. But I think you've more or less got the gist and you can practice that if you need to. But bar six, you'll notice is exactly the same as bar two. And you'll notice bar seven is exactly the same as bar three. And even, I'm counting, sorry. Bar four is the same as bar eight. It is literally only the last bar where things sort of have to change because you're either coming into a finger picking pan or you're going to strum. So I'm gonna to talk to you about that bar first and then we will try the last line as a nice little exercise. So we are talking about bar nine and this is when you've come again from that ring finger, which would have been in the previous bar on that three. You're coming up into that abstract G and you're reaching back for the two and then you sort of <laughs> looks like I'm swearing at the audience I'm so sorry <laughs> and then we're just coming back to the two and a D and that's so that you could potentially get into a finger picking pattern that I'm going to show you in a minute um, and I'm going to tell you the words first for this rhythm I think you'll find that easier so you're going to go dump T dump T T and again dump T dump T T and from this position, just so you know, because our first chord we're coming to is an A sus, or an A, if you wanna, <laughs> if you wanna make it real simple, what I would probably do from this position for the very first chord, plonk my index down, and then I can get into a proper A sus two from there and carry on and do the rest of the song. So that's a handy little top tip if you like. So once you've done this bar, I call it pudding finger, <laughs> where I just go splat and just cover down the notes I need and then I can get into my happy usual position. So just a top tip. Let's come back to that bar and let's do it with numbers as well. One and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and and again one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and and then put in finger and off you go so let's see if we can do that last line so that is from bar six to bar nine so you're coming from a yeah we would have just had our abstract g that would have gone into a d chord so d chord is down ready to go at this point so let's do it bar six counting you in one and two and 
three and four and one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and let's do it with tea and coffee so again from the D one two three four tea tea coffee tea 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 coffee tea 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 coffee tea dump tea dump tea tea and I will say one more thing about the very last bar if it's really tripping you up just try and get as far as the three and then it sounds right in my mind anyway so you get your abstract G, get the two, and then just hold on that three on your B string. All right then, let's go all the way through this little melody. So from the beginning, here we go. One, two, three, four. One, two. How did you do? Don't worry if it was pants. It won't be if you do it several times over, you'll be absolutely fine. <laughs> and you'll realize, oh, actually it's, it's not that bad. Okay, let's have a quick look at the finger picking pattern then. So you know it by now, chords off because we've got to train the right hand first before we touch those, all right? So we're gonna start on our A string, but we're gonna be mindful that that will change depending on the chord. If we're on an A chord, for instance, Definitely we'll start on the A. If we were on a C chord, we would also start on that, but there's no C's in this, yay. Um, if it was a G chord or an F sharp minor chord, you can see already we're starting on the E, yeah? If it's a D chord, we'll start on the D. And you can see this guy's lifted because it's a D sus too. But don't worry about all of that just yet. Like I said, no chords on. It's all about the right hand. Your rhythm is a dump T T Jessica dump. T Jessica dump T T Jessica dump T T Jessica It's one of my favorites <laughs> and it will sound like this so you're going to go A string G string B string G D G and with the rhythm dump T T Jessica dump T T Jessica dump T T Jessica Jessica dump, T T Jessica dump, T T Jessica. It's very, very normal, by the way, to um manage it maybe just twice through to start with before there's a mistake or maybe four times through if you're lucky and then there's a mistake you're not going to get it smooth immediately unless you're familiar with it and you've done it a million times before so please be kind to yourselves otherwise the homework is no fun <laughs> and I want you to have fun all right so like I said when you are practicing this no chords on all in the right hand little and often, do not practice this for an hour. You will drive yourself and anybody else around you mad. <laughs> right, and then say you've been doing it for a week, a month, whatever it is, however long it's taken to get it into your hand, then you start to put the chords on. And that's when you're gonna notice that this finger, is, this thumb has got to move. Because it sounds a bit weird on the G6. And it could sound better if we hit the E. So it's a little bit of ear training, really, which is no bad thing. And you start to realize, ah, that sounds better. So I want 
want you to trust your ear a little bit and move that thumb accordingly. Definitely don't stay down there when it's a D. Because <laughs> it sounds awful. Alright? So when you get to the D, an A will still work, by the way. That will still work, but you might prefer to just play a D twice, like this. You don't have two Ds in a row, which is good, so you would go... and A... and carry on from there. And just a reminder, you don't have to finger pick it at all, you could just be strumming it. And you can see my pattern is just a down, down, up, up, down, up, down, down, up, up, down, up. So again, if we're loading that up and that's completely brand new, no chords on, um, I do recommend holding the strings so you don't send yourself mad and you're just going down, down, up, up, down, up, down, down, up. so on and so forth. Same rules apply. You get the strumming pattern first and then the chords come on. And then the world is your oyster. It's a pretty simple song to strum. The hardest chord in it is probably that F sharp minor, but I always say it's the easiest bar chord to start with because it is just a bar straight across second and an E minor shape on fourth fret, if you like. And I like to stack my bar as well so I get a bit more pressure. Gives me a better chord. It's just a nice one to start with. I always feel sorry for people when they're trying to start with like a B7. It's not the nicest bar chord to start with, you know? Keep things simple. Oh, and I nearly forgot, just so you're aware, I put an E minor in my tab because it sounds a lot like an E minor to me rather than holding on a G. Um, you'll notice on the sheet, if you download it, it says G6. G6 is essentially an E minor anyway. So purists, please be, you know, kind or go somewhere else. <laughs> this isn't really the channel for you. It's very much my arrangement of this song. Okay, and I'm gonna leave it there. And if you wanna play along with uh, my version of this, I've actually done one on my other channel, so I will link that. Um, and yeah, tabs available on my Patreon as always. So enjoy this one, guys. Let me know how it works out for you. See you in the next one.